Welcome to What's the Risk, hosted by myself, Daniel Crow, and Peter Mansell, founder of Mansell Financial Group, a financial advice business he founded in 1980. This is a simple video series we hope investors can use to better understand index and portfolio performance, along with addressing some investment questions and dilemmas. This episode is on the MSCI World X Australia Index in AUD and the S&P ASX 300 Index Total Return with a 60-40 split rebalanced annually. A bit of a mouthful. Uh, this is a bit of a favourite out there and combining the ETFs that seek to track these indices is known as the VAS VGS split thanks to Vanguard's ETFs. Your Investment Philosophy, a book we wrote, uh, shameless plug, available at Amazon. Disclaimer, please pause and read. Suffice to say our intent is educational and not rendering financial advice. Don't make a step to sign. These are simple concepts. We just want investors to better understand performance in the short and long term. Periodic performance. Divergence in performance has led the diversified option with the be- to have the best performance over the long term. It's a little bit of an ad, I guess, for diversification. You start to see the impact here of using different indexes together. Yeah, it's a great piece of evidence here, Daniel, and that is that over time, blending local and foreign shares in a disciplined way with that 60-40 split bias towards the global market in the long run has delivered the better results at the extreme right of the chart, the 40 years since inception, which is actually all of my financial advice career, a blend of the two annually rebalanced has delivered a better result than either of the two components over that 44-year period. When we look at the bottom half of the chart, you can see in the last decade, investing in global shares has been the darling. But then when we look at the 20 and 30-year numbers, which includes the years from 2000 to 2009, investors got better results if they were investing with a bias towards Australia. Both of those individual outcomes have been usurped, if you like, by the fact that the long-term blending of the two has delivered the best results. On to the next one, and we get to see how it has turned out to be the winner with the growth of wealth. Money going from the ASX 300 back into the MSI, MSCI world, and then when performance flips over. So I guess this is why rebalancing can help because not everything stays as the best performer forever. This area area here is why the combination of the two has ended up the, the better because money was being taken out in the rebalancing and being put back into the underperforming MSCI world. And then when that started going really well in the 2010s, it's certainly paid off. Absolutely right, Daniel. In fact, the the, the chart from roughly just left of centre is a clear lesson for investors because we all know if we could, we'd always sell everything that was expensive and we'd always buy things that were cheap that were going to become expensive. But you can't know in advance e- exactly when things are cheap or indeed when they're absolutely expensive. The first of those peaks just before 2001, obviously global shares had done extremely well. Then they underperform. For the whole of 2000s and the blue line, sort of the the laggard there. So during each of those periods, as Australian shares were doing really well, we'd be taking some of the funds out of Australian equities and buying more of, of the global equities, which are cheaper. But eventually, those two shorter term outcomes reverse by doing the rebalancing, by being disciplined about it, the green line ends up well and truly the better. So diversification, absolutely vital. Rebalancing gets rewarded. The discipline that you need to ensure that that rebalancing takes place, that will pay dividends over time. Range of returns and the, I guess you could say the impact of that last decade is still being felt, but it's not quite as bad as what it was in that MSCI world just by itself. If we start even at the left-hand end, at the the one-year results, if you look at just Australian equities or just global equities, the range from worst to best is actually much wider if you don't have the blend of the two. Uh, There's an immediate lesson there in terms of diversification, reducing the range of possible results from worst to best. If we look at the passage of time, though, the three-year numbers, the range of results is narrower. The five-year numbers, narrower again, and 10 years, and of course, 20 years, much narrower 
again. And, and very interestingly, of the three, 10 and 20 years, the worst outcomes all start at very close to the same point in time. And that just shows that a lot of the results can overlap a period that might start with a very poor result. That said, importantly, over time, the worst and best years keep getting closer and closer to the average. So rolling in your returns, obviously there's a, another influence there again from MSCI world across the, the 2000s period, but it's not as pronounced as it was. Still, the most important message here is the sheer volume of results that are well above the line and compare that to the much lesser volume of poor results below the line. Yes, the 2000s were a very poor period for investing globally in equities. One, because equity markets weren't as generous in that decade globally, but secondly, because the Australian dollar was strengthening over that period. But over the whole period there, the, the 43 years that we can see on screen, the positive results vastly outweigh the poor results. Historical chance of positive, negative. And for context here, um, there's 528 monthly periods, 343 were positive and 185 were negative. And when you get down to the five year, obviously there's no 10 years now that are, are negative, even though it was a very, eked out a very small gain. And the five year periods, there were 469, 434 of those were positive and there were 35 negatives. The passage of time will eventually reward investors and the prospects of negative results get less and less and less. Whilst, you know, it's just over one in three months are negative, but there are no 10-year periods that are negative for the investor that, that was disciplined and, and undertook their rebalancing year by year. Uh, the largest fall in recovery. So if we look back previously, the ASX 300 was 73 months. The MSCI world was 168 months. And the combination on a 60-40 split being rebalanced annually is 70 months. Yeah, quite an amazing uh, contrast with just the MSCI on its own mm. uh, when you consider nearly 100 extra months to, yeah. to recover. It, it just again shows... As, as Harry Markowitz said in his work that won him the Nobel, Nobel Prize for Economics, diversification is effectively investors' only free lunch. By being diversified and by being disciplined with the rebalancing, uh, obviously you're buying those lesser priced assets and buying uh, those at better prices and getting rewarded for it over time. A couple of other points I'd make here again is that as the markets are declining, for the investor that's accumulating, say, whether it be through their superannuation fund or a, a disciplined savings program, each of those investments they make on the way down will inevitably prove to be some of their best investments. For the investor that's at retirement, maybe drawing their income out of their pool of assets, making sure that you've got something like six years worth of your future spending in cash and fixed interest securities means that these market downturns are not going to adversely affect you. The cash and fixed income securities are where you get your cash flow from, and that way you can ride out the downturn. And the risk and return relationship here becomes a little more obvious how combining assets can change things. You ended up with a bit of a midpoint, and it's a lot less volatile than either of the two. This is one of the best depictions you'd see of, of Harry Markowitz's theory of an efficient portfolio. And, and you can see there that the, the split portfolio with assets both in global equities and local equities has a return that's nearly as high as the Aussie equity market, but the volatility is significantly lower. That's the benefit of diversification. Blending different asset classes over time leads to lesser volatility. And sources and descriptions of data, it's everything we've used and how we've combined this portfolio. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.